This video is made possible by Continental Mazda in Naperville. With the resources of a large dealership, but the care of a family-owned business, Continental Mazda is the best place for you to buy your next vehicle. Visit them on the web by clicking in the link in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2020 Mazda CX-30. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline four. Down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving the CX-30 for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is my first video with Continental Mazda of Naperville. They are absolutely awesome. As you guys may or may not know, I actually bought a car from them not too long ago and their service has been absolutely amazing. Go in, talk to Anthony, he's the best. But the second reason, and the more important reason, is the fact that I haven't driven the CX-30 yet and it's brand new for 2020. This is the first year that they're making the CX-30. And the CX-30 was designed to fit in between the CX-3 and the CX-5. The reason it's not named the CX-4 is because overseas in China, they actually sell a CX-4, which is a completely different vehicle. So in order to keep everything organized on the corporate side of Mazda, they named this the CX-30. But let's get back to that 2.5 liter inline four. Well, it makes about 186 horsepower, which isn't bad at all. It's definitely very, very peppy. It's not gonna blow the doors off of a Lamborghini, but that's okay in my book. I really do like the power. I love the fact that Mazda dropped the two liter. They used to sell a lot of vehicles with a 2.0 liter. It was essentially a Miata motor, and that just really doesn't cut the mustard when it comes to SUVs like this. But the 2.5, I really, really enjoy. Miles per gallon, I'll put up on the screen. Again, very good considering that it is all-wheel drive. You know, historically, all-wheel drive vehicles got horrible fuel economy. Well, thanks to the Skyactiv G and the Skyactiv drive system, that's actually a thing of the past now. Like I said, paired to it is a six-speed automatic. This is the same transmission you'll find in the Mazda 3, in the CX-5, in most of Mazda's other products, and I like it. I really, really do. There is a sport mode, and we do actually have paddle shifters, which we'll talk about a little bit later on when we talk about the steering wheel. But overall, I like the transmission. It shifts well. It doesn't bog. It doesn't make weird beeps and squeaks when you push it. It just, it works flawlessly, and that's all I can really ask for from an automatic transmission. Last but not least, this is the all-wheel drive version of the CX-30. However, you can still get front-wheel drive if that's something you prefer. The lower trim models tend to have front-wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have a lot to talk about with the CX-30, a lot that I absolutely love. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the left is my tachometer. I love that it gets a tachometer. In the center, I do have a digital gauge and I can actually switch the readout. So right now I prefer looking at the radar cruise, it gives me a nice little back view of the CX-30 as well as my speed in digits. However, if I hit the info button, I can switch to a more traditional speedometer, traditional speedometer with driving information in the center, and then we're back to the radar cruise. So you do get a little bit of customization. I really like this because if you have a digital gauge, why not? Why not give me the customization? It's just a screen. I should be able to make it whatever I want. And I get options like that in the CX-30. I really, really like that. One thing I do really like is that up above the gauge cluster, I do have a heads up display. This is part of the preferred package. So I can actually see my speed in digits while I'm driving along. I really, really like that. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume controls, skip track, phone options, and info. And on the right, I have my radar cruise distance and other cruise control options. I like the overall look of the steering wheel. It's a lot thinner than the previous generation of Mazda steering wheels, and I've really grown to love it. I wasn't sure about it at first, but after driving this for a while, and my Mazda 3 has the same steering wheel, I really do truly love it. It feels great in your hands. It has a good amount of weight, and something that my Mazda 3 does not have is paddle shifters. So the CX-30 actually does come with paddle shifters, which is nice if you wanna get a little bit extra sporty feel out of the car. To the left of me, I have my little, I like to call it the bubble button. This basically turns on and off the sensors around the car, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert. You can toggle that on and off with one button. In the past, it was like eight different buttons to do six different things. So now it's nice, one button, there you go. Then I have my rough terrain button. So because this is an SUV, the odds of you going off-road in it are a lot higher, and so this is something that the 3 does not have. 
which is a rough terrain button. I really, really like that. Down below all of that, I have my tailgate button and two different memory seat options. Memory seats were not that common in Mazda 10 years ago. So now they're really starting to roll out a lot more vehicles with memory seats. And you guys know I love memory seats because I review upwards of seven or eight cars a week. Getting into all of them, I always feel bad messing up the seat for the next guy doesn't matter. Memory seats solve that issue and I love that. On the door, I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. Nothing too crazy there. However, I do have the Bose audio system. Again, this is part of the preferred package. We'll talk about that more towards the end of the video of why you should definitely get the preferred package on your CX-30. Moving into the center, we have the center display. It is no longer touchscreen. Mazdas of years past, they were touchscreen. However, they actually pushed it further back into the dash, made it larger, but it's no longer touchscreen. I love, love, love this center screen. I think it works really well. I think it looks great, and Mazda up their infotainment system. Again, early 20 teens Mazda had an infotainment system that was kind of hard to use, kind of hard to get used to. I wasn't a big fan of it. This is sleek, simple. It looks like something you would find in a BMW 5 Series. It really, really does. It looks very classy, very, very modern. And to me, that's really important because if I'm gonna spend money on a car, I want it to feel and look modern. Coming down below the infotainment system, we do have our climate controls. They're very minimalist. I have two knobs and then my controls in the center. I like this a lot. I don't have to fidget. I know exactly what the car is doing. I do have dual zone as well as auto climate controls. Everything I need is in one solid bar and their physical buttons. I cannot tell you how much I hate cars where the climate controls are run through the center screen. Because then if you wanna change the radio station, and your climate controls, you have to do it at two separate times. Just, I, I like the physical air conditioning controls. I really, really do. Down below the air conditioning controls, I have my heated seat options, defrosters, and hazard switch. Nothing really too crazy there, except the heated seats. That is part of the higher trim level preferred package as well. Again, something I would recommend, especially here in the Midwest. Then I have two cup holders and the shifter. Now, the video you're seeing right now, the shifter bezel looks white. This is just the protective film because this is a brand new vehicle. So I'll show a picture of my own personal shifter bezel it looks the exact same that's what it looks like without the paper on it but i like the shifter i like the feel of it it's the same shifter they use in pretty much every mazda it feels good has good weight to it has a nice leather shift knob on the top then i have a couple interesting things down below first of all in the center i have my selector wheel for that center screen like i said the center screen is not touch screen so this is how you control the entire screen and i love it i love it because it has good tactile feedback every time i turn it it clicks, it click, click, click. I, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly how many turns I have to make. And it can also be used as a joystick. So I can go left, right, up, or down. And that's the same with the volume knob, which is off to the right. This is where the volume knob is, which is down on the center console. And I absolutely love this. It's way more ergonomic. I always rest my hand on the center console. And so the volume is literally always at my right hand within a finger length away. Yes, I have it on the steering wheel, but honestly, I find myself using the center more often. And I like that it's down there. Then to the left of all of that, I have my power parking brake and power hold. The power parking brake is interesting because every time you start the CX-30, the power parking brake is automatically on. If you put your seatbelt on, put it into drive, it'll automatically disengage. It'll sort of brake stand a little bit. The car will kind of brake stand just a little bit unless you actually hit it off but if you're not buckled it will not automatically turn off so i like that as a little safety precaution you can't just hop in and start going without your seatbelt. that's pretty smart thinking by mazda you just have to now learn and remember to either automatically disengage the power parking brake or just understand that the car is going to lurch a little bit every time you first start it it's not that big of a deal below that is auto hold this is god's gift to the earth well this is god's gift to commuters because auto holding brakes you toggle it on and when you come to a stop you hit the brake just a tiny a little extra hard and then you can take your foot fully off the brake and the car will stay in place this is perfect for construction traffic jams long drive-throughs or honestly just when you're tired you don't want to keep holding your foot there that's so much work so i'll come up to a stop here auto hold hit the brakes take my foot completely off the brake and i'm still in drive but 
the car isn't moving. So in order to disengage that, just get back on the gas and it starts going. That is very smart thinking. I wish all cars had it. And honestly, most cars do at this day and age. Then we have the center console. It's finished in this nice stitched leather. I can move it back to reveal just a little bit of a cubby hole, a little bit of a phone holder, or I can open it fully. I like that a lot. I think it's really intuitive. Now we have to talk about the seats. The seats are tan perforated leather. I really like the feel of them. I like the look of them. And like I said, they are power heated memory. I mean, anything you want out of a modern seat, this car gives you, and I absolutely love that. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2020 Mazda CX-30. And honestly, it, it's not amazing back here. Leg room is okay. My knees do touch the front seat. If leg room and rear occupants are at the very top of your priority list, look at the CX-5. The CX-5 is a little bit larger, and so the rear leg room is a lot better than this. However, this isn't bad. I have power windows back here. I have two little climate control vents back here, and I do have a center console, two cup holders, but that's really it. Nothing too crazy back here. I would definitely be comfortable back here riding. I mean, that, that's not an issue. It's just if you really, really need all of the leg room you can get, look into a CX-5, but this is fine for around town. If you don't use your back seats every single day, these are absolutely perfect. Now we will talk about the hatch and cargo room real quick. So a nice feature over the Mazda 3 as well is power tailgate. So just hold the button on the remote and it opens up just like that. Once you actually get in here, it's about the same cargo room as the 3. And actually, no, there's definitely more. Definitely more cargo room than the, the Mazda 3, but not too much. Here's the floor mats, of course, because it's a new car. I love that it says CX-30 on them. Uh, my car says Mazda 3, and I absolutely love that feature. It looks very classy. Nothing really too crazy back here. I wish I had a 12-volt outlet, but the CX-5 does have a 12-volt outlet. So if you are serious about the back seat and about the cargo space, just look for a CX-5. Um, and I do have a CX-5 video up on my channel currently um, if that's something you would want. But hit one. But Oh, so up here I can lock the whole car like this or boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Real easy and simple. Now we gotta talk about the looks. I, of course, love the look of the CX-30. I think it fits really well in Mazda's lineup. I love the Kodo design language. The Kodo design is the, the side of the vehicle, if you look, there's no harsh edges, harsh lines. It's sort of this flowy, and so the reflections sort of flow like a wave, which is really, really cool, really interesting to look at. However, it makes it very, very difficult to photograph. It's very odd. It's, it's very odd to photograph. The more light you can get into the car, the better. In the dark, it just, it looks like a swirl. It looks like that uh, that Van Gogh painting, Starry Night. Th that, that's what it reminds me of when I look at it at night. It's just this swirling sort of beautiful edgeless design. So needless to say, I really do, of course, like the look of the CX-30. And now as we get towards the end of the video, two final talking points about the CX-30. The first of which being, please, 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 please get the preferred package. And the reason I say this is I keep saying, I personally own a 2019 Mazda 3 hatchback in all wheel drive, which is essentially a smaller, lowered version of this car. I did not get the preferred package. I got a base model. It worked with my budget. However, I am slightly kicking myself for not getting the preferred package. The Bose audio makes a big difference in the base. You also get the heads up display. You get the nicer materials in here. I have this brown chocolatey leather on the dashboard. I have heated seats. I have memory seats. All that stuff is part of the preferred package. Apple CarPlay and Radar Cruise Control are standard. They'll come on every car. So if Radar Cruise and Apple CarPlay is all you care about, then you're fine. But I would highly recommend looking into and trying to make the preferred package work because it just has the nicer amenities. And really, I love the feel of this car. This car feels a lot nicer than it is. When I get in this car, I, I feel luxurious. You know, I just drove, the last video before this was the 2021 Chevy Tahoe, $66,000. This feels as nice, if not honestly, in my own opinion, nicer. Just the materials in here, the sound, the quiet. I know I always yell. I'm Italian. I yell a lot. 
I don't have to. It's real nice and quiet in here. The road noise is non-existent. This is way less than half the price of that Tahoe and I would say arguably a lot, lot nicer. And my second and final talking point about the CX-30 is the ride height. Like I keep saying, I know, I'm gonna beat this into your head that I own a Mazda 3 in the same body style and the same everything, same engine, transmission, differentials, all that stuff, it's the same. The main difference between the Mazda 3 and the CX-30 is the ride height. And why is that important? Why is ride height important? Well, when I bought my car, when I bought my Mazda 3, the first place I took it was to go show my grandparents. They were excited to see it. I was excited to show it to them. I was so over the moon. My grandparents had a hard time not only getting into it, but getting out of it. And so that's something you might want to consider. If you have older relatives, if you know that you drive around older relatives, or if you're older yourself, if you have back issues, leg issues, hip flexor issues, whatever it may be, getting into a lower sedan every single day is gonna get tiresome. At least it's gonna get a lot more tiresome than getting into this. This has that nicer, taller ride height, so getting in and out of it is a lot, lot easier. So if that's something important to you, I would highly recommend searching out the CX-30 as opposed to the Mazda 3. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge, huge, huge thank you to Continental Mazda in Naperville. They are absolutely awesome. Like I said, great customer service. They got me into a car that I really wanted. Buying a car from them was quick, easy, and painless. I think I was in and out the door in like an hour and a half, which is like, unheard of at dealerships you know you always hear those horror stories of people spending eight and a half hours there no no, no. i was in and out in my brand new car in an hour and a half maybe it was two hours with all the oogling and googling i did but continental mazda of naperville is absolutely amazing their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below i'm so excited to be working with them now and bringing you guys the latest mazda videos because you guys know I love Mazdas. You guys love Mazdas. Everyone loves Mazdas. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.